Hey there, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with uh, Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to be showing in this video uh, the new digital denture update. Uh, so the, the digital denture software has been in beta mode. This is one of the first public releases. Still many changes to come, many uh, things to make it more and more efficient, but this is still one that is very, very usable, that has most bugs worked out. And so I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to use that, and then I'll actually attach in the comments uh, the actual files so that you can try this out and hopefully uh, get started doing some digital denture. So as you can see this is version 4.3.0 and so depending on the time that you watch this uh, I'm, I'm doing this on 9-28 of 2018 uh, with the nature of the interwebs if you're watching this six months from now most of this will be irrelevant so you might just look for the update or a more updated uh, video of the beta software. But what we're going to do is just simply open up Blue Sky Plan. This is the uh, the basic layout. You know, it's right now just on the 3D uh, view. But if you wanted to, you could go just to the standard implant planning view by clicking Perspectives and Implant Tangential 3. And this is probably what you're more familiar with. In our case, for doing dentures, really we do only care about this 3D window. So let's go and let's pull in the files. And so in this case, um, what I'm going to do is pull in these three files. Now you'll notice I'm going to pull these all in at once. There is a total jaw. That is a scan of the patient, or I'm sorry, of the uh, upper and lower articulated together in some bite rims. And then there's the lower and the upper independently. I'll simply grab all of these, hover over Blue Sky Plan, and then drop them into the 3D window. It's going to pull all three of these in simultaneously, and then you can begin on your case. And it should be noted that all model importing uh, should be done in this 3D window within the surgical guide mode, okay? Whether you're in normal or advanced, but you do have to be in surgical guide mode to first um, pull in models and secondly to orient them. So here are the models. Now one notable uh, thing right now is that if you look at these, right here is the anterior, if you look at these they're not oriented the same way as the head and currently this is one of the things that we are going to improve on where you'll just have to click three dots on like the incisive papilla and the two hamular notches and everything will auto uh, position. But until then you're going to have to manually align these to the uh, head for all the functions to work correctly. So what I would suggest doing is just go to your surfaces panel, maybe turn off a couple of these, uh, and let's just position this one because it's easiest to orient to. So back to model manipulation panel, and we're going to select which one of these models we want to align. In this case, this gray one is called the total jaw, and we're going to say adjust this position manually. All right, so when I do that, this widget will come up where I can rotate this into position and again the goal being that I want to orient this the same way as the head is oriented down here. So if I was to click on the top of the head I can look at it from this dimension and I could maybe pull it over into the center of view. If I looked at it from this side um, again this should be oriented where the occlusal plane is flat to the floor just like you see here. and. If you ever need to, you can just click on and off the model position manually real quick and it will reorient your um, rotation widget to the head so that you're not trying to, to grab these rings and rotate them in strange ways. So let's look at it one more time from the anterior and I can see that if I pull this into the center of view, this looks like everything is good. Maybe just one little tweak right there and I like this. So now we can turn that off. But now, if you notice, the other models are not oriented. They're still oriented the other way. So it's worth noting that when you save an STL, it's not just saving the, the shape of that object, it's also saving its XYZ coordinates in space. And so the software remembers what the original orientation of these models was to one another. So what we can do now is if we have changed just one of those, but we wanted to bring the others back into relationship with it, we can click direct and in this case let's align the maxillary model so the green one we will pick that in the drop down menu here we're going to choose direct and then we're going to say align to model now which model do we want to align it to we want to align it to the total jaw which is the one we just positioned to ideal so destination model is total jaw I click OK and now it pulls it into position now I can just repeat the process with the lower jaw mandible, uh, direct, 
align to model and align it to the total jaw. So now all of our models are in the right orientation. We can turn these on and off. If we wanted to change the colors, we can do that. Make that yellow, whatever. And now that we've oriented the models and we've imported all the models that we're going to use in the case, now we're ready to switch to digital denture mode. So go up to the top and click module and go to the bottom and click denture. So now we're in the denture mode. You see that the view changes a little bit. You've only now got the 3D view to work with. The menu becomes much simplified because now we don't need all those components for surgical guides. And uh, now we can begin the process of doing the dentures. Now, I, I glossed over earlier the fact that this case, I just did the models as um, two standard models poured up in stone related with traditional bite rims, very much the traditional denture workflow. The reason I'm showing that, it's for sure not the only way that you can do it, but it is the simplest to get started on. So if you're just venturing into the software, I would recommend starting out by this means. So maybe do it your, your old school way with a border molded impression and then pour that up, get some bite rims, um, get the vertical dimension relation just like you would typically do, mark your midline, get your occlusal plane, and that is going to make your tooth setting um, be very much simplified and then maybe in subsequent videos I'll show you some of the more advanced options of how to do this. Okay, so let's first of all turn off this model and we need to add the teeth sets. So go up to add tooth and you're going to see that there are multiple libraries of teeth. Now you see two options, virtual teeth sets and physical teeth sets. So if I go to physical teeth sets, um, you're going to see that currently, and there'll be more to come on this, but currently in this version you see three options. These are nobilium teeth and the names here correspond to the molds, so T5, L7, 32U, and 32L. That's your upper anteriors, your lower anteriors, and your posterior teeth, upper and lower. Um, the reason for only these three initially is these more or less correspond uh, T5 to a small mold, T7 to a medium-sized mold, T11 to a large mold. Okay, so small, medium, large patient, and you could pick this. Now, why is there a distinction here? Because one of the things we're aware of is that many of these denture teeth companies are hesitant to release their STLs to put in a software such as this for fear of you just undercutting them and instead of purchasing their teeth, you're just going to print them or mill them, right? We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that this is uh, beneficial to the denture tooth companies. And so if you choose a physical tooth set, you'll still do all of the process the exact same way. Um, you would insert these teeth, you would move them around. You need to be careful not to scale their position or anything um, because it then wouldn't correspond to the real teeth. But you would proceed through the process. At the end, it's going to give you um, just the file for the base, which has the sockets subtracted out so that you could purchase these real teeth. Blue Sky Bio sells these nobilium ones. Purchase those real teeth, drop them into the sockets, bond them together, and now you have a denture that is either printed or milled bases with conventional teeth. If you choose physical teeth sets, as I've shown here, you will not be able to export the teeth at the end. That's how we're protecting the manufacturer's teeth STLs so that you can't undercut them. We've got options for that if you do want to go the route of printed uh, teeth. You just won't be able to use, um, say, the nobilium teeth. Again, if you're going to go this route, you're going to have to purchase the physical tooth sets. In the case of where we do want to do printed or milled teeth, then we're going to choose virtual teeth sets. And again, there's four, uh, I'm sorry, three libraries currently, and I have many more to come, but in this version, this is what we have. Um, we have had some talented ceramists do wax ups and generate virtual tooth libraries. So Mitch Hurst has done two libraries for us, actually. This one is more of a standard steep anatomy. For a denture, I like his uh, flat anatomy. And so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to say select all teeth and then add the selected teeth as a chain. Okay, now typically I would do that. Um, I just happen to know though from having done this case a few times, it's a really small arch and uh, there's not gonna be room for second molars. So if you needed to eliminate, let's say second molars or some premolars, what you could do is come up here, control select and just 
unhighlight those second molars. And now I can add the selected teeth as a chain. You'll have a, a tooth hovering under your uh, mouse and now just come up, push shift on the keyboard and click on the maxillary model. The software is now going to import all of these teeth. It's going to chain them together and they're already going to be set in an ideal uh, occlusion. That's one of the big time savers with this Blue Sky Bio uh, denture software is that hopefully in 90% of cases you don't have to do any tooth setting. You're going to just simply do big universal movements like this. So I pull it over to roughly in that position. I'm going to pull them back to where they are within the arch. And now I'm going to start visualizing, do these teeth look like they fit um, that patient? So you might have chosen uh, something like, uh, maybe you know the size central incisor you want from an allometer, or uh, maybe you in your, in your setup, you, you marked the commissures of the mouth and then you would scale these teeth to where the canines, to canine to canine fit within those two markings. In this case, I did not do that. I'm just going to eyeball it according to what the, uh, uh, the arches look like visually. So if I needed to rescale these teeth, if I, feel, if I feel like they're too big, go to the denture panel. If you don't see that, go to panel, denture design. Turn that back on. And what we can do is while we've got this move entire tooth chain button selected, we can scale the teeth up or down. So you can make a little baby denture, you could make a very large denture. And I'm just simply going to uh, eyeball this and try to get teeth that I feel like are appropriately sized for this patient's arch. Um, how do I know where to position these? I can toggle on and off in my teeth surfaces the bite rims. And my assumption is if you've done bite rims that you have set the anterior positioning of those teeth uh, to correspond to the um, correct amount of lip support. So I can pull these over, line up that midline as you see right here. The teeth need to be rotated just a bit. And the facial surfaces of these teeth I'm going to place right on uh, the, the point that I marked for my occlusal plane. I'm also going to position the occlusal plane to correspond to this uh, bite rim. Okay, remember if you've gone to the trouble of aligning this maxillary rim to the allotragus, um, to the inner pupillary line, all of those things, then you should just simply be aligning your teeth exactly to that. So now this looks like a, a very good position. The occlusal plane is following this approximately. Um, just use the widget and position these teeth universally. If you needed to, you could right click on the model that has the bite rims and turn on the transparency. And that way you can see the teeth underneath it. And when I look at this, that looks like to me that I'm following my occlusal plane very nicely. The midline is lined up right here. Um, so I'm pretty much done with my universal positioning of the teeth. So now I've got them scaled to size. I've got the occlusal plane set, <clears throat> I've got the mid lanes, midline set, and now I can turn off this move entire tooth chain. Now, at this point, you might want to um, turn on the individual tooth chain. So let's click show and hide tooth chain. When I click that on, you're going to see these dots appear, and this is your tooth chain. This is going to allow you to position these teeth on the arch. And so um, I'm going to right click and hide the visibility of my mandibular model. And let's look at this. Does my, uh, does my arch form of teeth seem to be following uh, this model uh, appropriately? And if not, I can very easily change that. So to me, this looks like it's not sitting over the ridge very well. So I'm going to lock this at the canine. I'm going to turn on this move opposing tooth. Um, for right now, I would say hold off on using this keep uh, opposing arch in occlusion. Just use the move, move opposing tooth. And when I look at this from an occlusal view now, I can grab the next tooth distal. Um, and I would suggest grabbing that one as opposed to maybe grabbing way down here the second molar. Grab the next tooth distal to the canine, hold down shift, and then left click the tooth. And what you should see happen 
Oh, I'm sorry. This is why it's not working. I, I didn't realize in my orientation I had clicked the uh, mandibular tooth. So let's just do that. I was trying to click the upper tooth, so let's just grab the mandibular tooth just distal to that canine. I'm holding shift and then I left click that tooth and I can pull this over and just swing that whole posterior quadrant behind this hinge point like a barn door and I can line this up over the arch. Super fast, super simple to uh, make those changes. Let's suppose that you needed to make individual tooth changes. You wanted to tweak something or the, the more common scenario is maybe you're setting just one arch against a natural dentition. So let me turn off the move opposing tooth and let's suppose that there was a natural dentition opposing just this upper arch. Well, what I could do, if there's a tooth right here and this one is impinging into it, I could lock the tooth on either side, look at it from the buckle view, hold down shift, and just move that tooth up, okay? And, or move it down to create occlusion. I'm gonna undo that because I don't wanna do that in this case, but this is how you would do the, the tooth movements. If you look at your arch and this is too much of a U-shaped arch for the case that you're working on, then maybe you want to lock it at the central incisor and change this to more of a V-shaped arch. Okay, once again I'll undo that because I don't want to do that. But the idea with the occlusion is that you're going to import these teeth already uh, set and they are going to be in the right orientation with the right occlusion and you just need to make the large universal changes to these. So once I've done that I can turn off the tooth chain and we're now ready to make the um, the actual denture. So in the denture panel select which model are you going to start out on. So in this case I'm going to make the upper denture so I'm going to choose the upper jaw model. I'm going to choose maxilla. You'll notice right now it's grayed out but once I choose maxilla now I can start to create denture. First step you'll have to do is define the axis of insertion. Okay so most of us with a maxillary denture are going to set the insertion coming in basically at the the direction of this anterior ridge. Okay, notice I'm not terribly concerned about the fact that my teeth impinge through the model. Um, you'll see how we deal with that a little bit later on in the process. Now I can position this. Um, I generally want this to come straight in from the anterior and what you're seeing with this dark brown that is the undercuts and so the software is identifying the undercuts based on the axis of insertion that you've established so if I was to change that to here the undercut gets much bigger if I was to go from a steeper angle the undercut gets smaller here but it perhaps gets bigger on uh, posterior areas okay so we've identified the axis of insertion now in this case because I was using conventional models that have already been poured up in stone, I had just scratched in a posterior palatal seal or post dam into the model, which is why you already see it here. Let's suppose you did not do that. You can use the software to define the posterior palatal seal. So if I was to click on that button, I can click shift in this hamular notch, hold down shift and click in the other hamular notch, and now a post dam appears and I've got the ability to now um, shape this in any way that I want. So I might make it steeper or uh, less steep. I might make it uh, deeper down into the palate or flatter. I might grab this and uh, widen out the post dam, the little cupid's bow. You can change the thickness. It defaults to two, but you can make that be whatever you want it to be. And then finally you can uh, shape the curvature of this. So rarely is a post dam going to be flat straight across. You're going to probably uh, change this up a little bit. So again in this case I do not need a post dam but I'll click this just uh, very quickly just so you can see it. So let's click next. The software is going to identify those undercuts. If you've chosen to block those out it will block them out um, but it's going to embed the uh, post dam into your model. And this will come up because at every step it's going to give you the opportunity to save this. I'm going to skip that. 
and so now you'll see it's created a new model and it tried to burn in a post post dam over the existing one that I'd already done again I'm just trying to show you a demonstration of that um, in this case I'm gonna go back cancel this and just get back to this point okay so I don't need the post dam I'm just going to set the axis of insertion and now we are ready to proceed with it one more thing to note you can allow undercuts and if I have this uh, set to allow undercuts um, I can allow them up to zero essentially meaning it will not allow undercuts and if I was to proceed with this you'll see a new model gets fabricated um, which has no undercuts whatsoever why would you use that well let's suppose that you wanted to actually make a uh, let's say you're doing a hybrid approach and you're going to do a printed base stick the denture teeth conventional denture teeth into the sockets and then conventionally process that well in order to do that you're going to have to be able to take that denture on and off of that master stone model if you've got undercuts you won't be able to do that but in this case since I'm going to go with the route of doing a printed denture I'm going to allow the undercuts and I'm going to just maximize it which is five millimeters which means essentially it will not cut out any undercuts and so this is going to uh, have the tightest fit uh, if you're going directly to print it or milled. Click next. Again this will come up. I'm not saving this for sake of time you'll see that now a new model is created and it'll put this big funky base on this which is in the same direction as your uh, uh, axis of insertion but again because I chose not to do anything with the undercuts you see nothing has been blocked out here everything still looks like the original model so now step two of six this is a wizard it leads you through the process it says to um, select the denture base so hold down shift on your keyboard and left click. When you do that it will drop a point and I'm just going to now begin dropping points excuse me and I'm going to proceed around the arch at the depth of the vestibule. If this is a in fact a, an impression that you poured up that had been border molded then you know your borders are at the very depth of this vestibule and that's where you want them versus maybe if you did just a, an alginate, let's say this was an immediate denture, you know that's going to be overextended, so maybe I would choose to not take my borders down near as far on that. So I'm going back to the point where I originally got to. When you get to this point, you're going to have to close this, uh, this circle and define this closed contour. So I've made the last click, and now that I'm close in proximity, I'll just shift left click and drag that point into the other one and now we've got a closed contour for the denture base offset offset is the uh, spacer if you're familiar in in the surgical guide mode with what your offset is it's basically the slop space between the surgical guide bottom and the model so again if I was going to do this as a conventionally printed um, uh, thing that I want to be able to seat on and off of the model if you zero this out to where it's a dead on fit you will not get that seated on the model so just like a surgical guide if you want this to fit back on a conventional model 0.3 offset is probably appropriate in my case I'm not doing that I want to 3d print this or mill this so I want to take offset down to zero thickness this is the thickness of the denture base as it's going to be created initially and so it sets itself to three I'm just gonna go with that and we'll click next but you can make that whatever you want if you have the need of a thinner base you can just change that to two or one or whatever you want to okay this will come up again again allowing you to save at every point in the process so that if something crashes you're not uh, out of luck now the denture base has been created but at this point it is purely a three millimeter thickness um, sheet of plastic okay it's just sitting on that and you may have areas where that's too much gingiva over some teeth the more likely scenario in most cases is what you have right here which is maybe there's not enough gingiva built up in between the teeth so this is a step which in subsequent builds um, is going to be eliminated but right now it's still there for this version and it's simple to do 
but what it's asking is okay we've done a universal thickness of material but we know there's probably the need to add more material to that so where would you like to add additional material up to and that for me is always going to be to the contact point right and so I'm looking at this and I'm going to orient this disc right at the contact point of the teeth and once I do that I can click next and that's where it's going to build additional gingiva up in between the teeth now why do I say we're eliminating this well to me it seems fairly obvious that if it's always going to be at the contact point that there's not much need in doing that so the software should just automatically default to this so this step and the next step uh, steps three and four will both be eliminated and accomplished automatically but for right now that's what you need to do uh, for using version 4.3.0 so let's click next Again, I'll cancel that now nothing has happened why did nothing happen because the next step is step four again one that will be eliminated in future versions is okay you've told me to where do you want to build additional gingiva up but now from where do you want to build that well you need to define another curve so hold down shift and begin clicking uh, a perimeter around this okay and this is where the software is going to stretch the gingiva up from this contour that you're defining to make a uh, uh, to make additional gingiva once again when you get to this point you're gonna have to shift left click drag it over until it closes this if I needed to add more points I can shift click on the line and you'll see that it uh, can be added now again why is this going to be eliminated because again I almost always define it like this I just pretty much do a um, contour that follows the teeth with the perimeter of about five millimeters so if it's always going to be that way we can just automatically make that happen so do it for right now you won't have to worry about this in future versions next and again wise to always save this but I'm not going to so now you're at really the final step which is um, doing your gingival festooning okay so you've got many tools available here this is your add and remove you can see here that you've got tool strength I like to use a pretty heavy tool strength and you've got tool size so if I hold down shift that activates the tool and you can see there's the tool size I can uh, use the roller on the mouse to increase or decrease that spot size or I could simply come over here and do this alright so I need to add just a little bit more gingiva. The software still built some more up in here, but I need to do it further. And this is one of those things that will continue to get better and better is the automatic proposal for gingiva. And hopefully one day this will be a step that's eliminated because you get such a good proposal. But for right now, you'll have to do a little bit of additional festooning. So if I click shift and then left click my mouse, if I've got that tool strength pretty high, I might not just hold down my mouse. Um, but rather just do a few clicks here and there to add material but you probably notice if I zoom in here far enough as I'm doing that I hover over this I can cover up more of the necks of these teeth alright so fill that in alternatively if I was to hold down control it would do the opposite okay so your your add and remove they're the same button it's just a matter of if you hold down shift it's an add tool if you hold down control it's a remove tool alright so I'm adding material here covering up the necks of these teeth if I had a little bump or something like this that I wanted to smooth out use your smooth tool once again I like the high tool strength size wise you can just run this over so if you wanted a really smooth palette in this case then you can just run this over the the palette and here is one benefit to having a stronger like gaming type computer is that if you've got a higher end video card and lots of processing power you will notice a significant um, advantage to using these tools they'll be faster um, they'll just be more efficient to use once again add I'm just covering up the necks of the teeth
Here I clearly need to reduce some, so I could do maybe control. So I'll decrease the spot size. And now I don't have uh, quite as much covering up that tooth. Let's go back to add, maximize my tool strength, and cover up these teeth. This becomes particularly important whenever you're using conventional denture teeth because if you don't cover up a decent amount of that tooth, it's going to be very easy for that tooth to become dislodged um, because there's not enough acrylic supporting it. Okay, so the local deform tool. This is a tool that I really use a lot of and um, the way it works is that you've got your spot size and now if I left click, I can drag this up very quickly. Okay, so this is a tool that I can make big changes pretty fast. So one thing to note is if I'm, let's say that I wanted to grab the gingiva here and pull it straight out at me, you're not going to be able to effectively use this tool and pull things in and out towards you. Do you see how that just happened? I, I don't have any control because I'm trying to push in and out of the page. Um, which is not the best way of doing this. Rather, I would want to kind of use this tool from the side. So I'll look at it more from a uh, um, view from the side or at a different angle. And now I can see much easier how that arrow is oriented and in what direction I am uh, adding or, or dragging material. Okay, so if you, the moral of the story is if you can't see the longness of this arrow, if you click on it and it's just looking straight at you, you're going to screw it up. You're going to pull holes in your material. It's not going to work. So make sure that you can see this arrow um, throughout its length. So what I'm trying to do right now is lengthen the papillas just a bit. And I want to close in that so I don't have a, a gap in the papilla. No black triangles. So I'm just running through, double checking that adding where needed. And there we go. Um, this denture is mostly done. Now it will probably wrap over and have something like this that once you've printed it, you might want to take a hand piece and grind this out just so there's not an abrupt change like that. But to me, that's a lot easier done on the uh, with a hand piece than it is to try and mess with it in the software. If I'm doing this as a really fast um, denture, I'm just trying to do you know, an affordable denture that I can offer as a temporary or something, I'm not doing any more than this. This looks like a great option. Um, it's uh, it's going to be acceptable. The teeth are in the right position. And I might just print this monolithically and not do any gingival festooning. In fact, filling in those gaps between the, the gingiva there at the contact point, I wouldn't have messed with any of that really probably the only thing I would have done is drag this up where I didn't have too much gingiva on this tooth because now if I print this out monolithically in a white material I can come back and I can do my festooning with gingival composites something that's pink and I can make this a more of a customized uh, look to the denture versus if I'm going to do this as a printed base in pink printed teeth in white then I probably want to take some time and do some gingival festooning. So one other thing that you can do that will add some character to your dentures is put in root prominences and gingival rolls. So canine prominence, I'm going to just add that. Now that was clearly too uh, <laughs> too sharp of a of a thing, but that looks nice for a um, oh what you call this little thingy. Um, word will come to me, but the piece of tissue right there. So you could stick that in. Um, but this is the, the danger in using those little bitty spot sizes. If I wanted to smooth those out now, come back over it, smooth it. What I was probably uh, would be a better thing to do is to use the local deform. So if I wanted a canine prominence, make a large spot size like this, pull that out. Okay, if I wanted a root prominence there, canine will be a little, or the lateral will be sunken in slightly as it usually is. Okay, we could do this throughout the arch. Maybe two individual root prominences on the molar back here. Okay. But what I find makes more of a difference in the, um, the aesthetics for gingival festooning is putting in a gingival roll 
So let's decrease this to a spot size that's relatively small. Now my goal here is not to cover up more of the tooth, but rather to create something like what you have in the mouth, which is just a um, uniform one to two millimeter rise around the necks of the teeth. And I'm doing a really terrible job of it right now because I'm just trying to do it for a demonstration. But the idea is that you can now have this gingival roll and I would tell you that the um, what you see in the software, invariably I print this out and it seems to be much less distinct um, because again, you're, you're looking at this really blown up. Once you actually print it, these, these things that look huge to your eye on the screen don't look quite as dramatic on a printed base. So hit that with a smooth. And now do you see how this, this does look like a much more um, realistic gingival roll on that. So I'm going to quit messing with this just for sake of the video time. Let's go ahead and click next. We're ready to finish this denture. You could save it. I'm going to cancel it. And the last step before the, it begins processing is you've got two things here. Uh, the denture uh, thickness. So what is the minimum thickness that you're going to do? Remember I mentioned that the software is going to um, take care of these uh, impinging spots, what it's going to do is do a Boolean subtraction, reduce these teeth, and maintain a 0.2 millimeter thickness of pink acrylic right here, and then eat that tooth away where it will fall into that socket. Um, how much slop space do you have between the white tooth and the pink socket? That is what your tooth offset is. 0.2 seems to be great. So the last thing that you could do, and you'll never do this if you're printing or milling, but if you're using conventional teeth, you can check this box that says uh, generate a tooth reduction coping. Again, if you're using um, conventional teeth, then it's useless for the software to just eat that away because you're, then you're going to grab the real tooth and it's not going to fit in there. So we need an efficient way to adjust the teeth in the same way in real life as we did in the software. And the way we do that, just like you would with a crown that maybe your lab sends you a reduction coping because you under reduced a tooth, but you still wanted to proceed. Same thing, you'll generate a tooth reduction coping that allows you to pop the denture teeth in and anything sticking out through the inside is going to need to be reduced. And you can do that really quickly with a handpiece. So I don't want that. I want to just basically leave these two alone and I'm gonna click finalize. Now this step is going to take a couple of minutes usually, um, so a good time to go do a hygiene check, just hang out for a minute, um, come back once this is done. Okay, the case is now completed, at least on the upper one. We would just need to go back and do the maxillary or the mandibular case. But let's look now in the teeth surfaces panel. So if you don't see that, go to panels, teeth surfaces. But you're going to notice now that there are several new um, surfaces in the case. You've got uh, obviously the original model that was created that um, took care of undercuts. If you chose to do undercuts, you've got the uh, base here, you've got your teeth, and you've got the trimmed teeth. So there's two bases that are present. One is the denture base. If you were doing this as a monolithic denture, then you would want to export this denture base and all of these teeth simultaneously, and you would basically end up with one single piece. All right, if I turn that one off, and we look at the other base, this is going to be denture-fin, that's final. This is the one with sockets. Do you see how there is now a 0.2 gap right there? That is your, your space for some bonding agent and cement to bond these teeth in, assuming you did it as two independent materials. So maybe you milled the base, milled the teeth, printed the base, printed the teeth, uh, whatever combination. And you'll see that there is an axis of insertion on this. Now you may wonder, why do I need that? Why don't we just have an individual uh, axis for each tooth? And the reason, in my opinion, is because I personally like to just print this as one single horseshoe and then 
drop it all in as one unit rather than as individual teeth. But in order for this to drop in as one piece, it's got to have one universal um, position uh, or a, an axis of insertion for these. And so it, it more or less defaults for that to be straight up and down with like the uh, perpendicular to the occlusal plane. So now I'll be able to just simply take this horseshoe of teeth. If I printed this on uh, in a white material and then I had a printed base in pink material and I just leave it attached to the supports. I don't break them apart because that still leaves these where they're connected and I can just put in cement, bond this together and you're done. Uh, just makes for less finishing and then once it's bonded together you can break your support material off the teeth and you're pretty much done. So again, if you're going to do a monolithic denture, then export the teeth plus the, the denture base. If you're going to do separate materials, separate white, separate pink, export the teeth and the denture dash fin for final base. And then one final thing is the, the teeth themselves. Okay, so notice that these teeth have been reduced. And that is why you see an R beside the names of all of these teeth. Okay, there are a couple of teeth, right? This one, this one, and this one that did not have to be reduced because they weren't in uh, tight proximity to the model. But every other tooth has been reduced. And so when you go to export, you don't want the ones that are impinging in, which are all these that were listed up here. Rather, what you want is the ones that are on the screen right now. So let's, let's do this. I want to show you how this exporting process works. And for right now, this is going to all be free and you don't have to worry about a cost. Eventually, we'll start just charging an export fee like we do a surgical guide. But knock yourself out while this is free and, and try to get experienced with the software. So let's assume that we were going to do a pink denture base and then the teeth. So the first thing that I need to do is export the teeth. So I'm going, going up to File Export Data. And the only thing that I want to export is those reduced teeth. So whatever you have on the screen showing is what's going to be check marked on. And that's useful because I don't want to have to go and sift through and then individually start checking teeth. I need to just have all those teeth apparent, check everything else off as far as bases, and I'm going to export this. Um, let's save this on my desktop and say horse shoe of teeth and that'll be done. Now I can come back and let's turn all of that off. Okay, turn all those surfaces off and I just want to see my denture final base. Here's the final denture base and I'm going to export this. File, export data. It's the only thing checked because it's the only thing I've got visible and I'm going to export it. Let's call this base with sockets and export it. So I'm not going to do the mandibular. It's just an exact repeat of what I just showed with this one. I want to show you how to do the file management aspect of this to now print it. So in my example, I'm going to print these out. So now if I open up my Moonray printer, Moonray is the, the printer that I'm liking and using the most right now. I come over to the plus to add the model and let's go to my desktop and let's assume that in my printer right now I have the tooth colored material. I'm going to print the teeth. So let's find horseshoe of teeth, open, and there they are. I would want to orient these just like you see here with occlusal surfaces down. I don't want any supports built onto the uh, top of these because that's where it's got to get cemented in and I don't want some, I don't want interferences between the intaglio of the denture base and that. Okay, so I could do that. I usually use low supports, so generate some supports. And let's see how much material this is going to require. Uh, eight milliliters of material at 100 micron thickness and an hour and 15 minutes. So you could probably equate that to maybe $2.50, $3, I would guess, and an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so we would print that. If you've only got one printer, I would suggest having two vats, one of tooth colored material, one of pink, so that the moment this one fin excuse me, finishes, then I could come back into my software, delete that, and this time pull in the pink. So I, I change out the tray, and now I'm going to use the base with sockets. Um, with this one, it's a little trickier. You know, 
if you orient this way, you're going to have supports built into your sockets that you're going to have to meticulously remove so that there's not an interference with your teeth going in. Frankly, I find that if you do this with the, the low supports that it's not a big problem. And heck, if you see a support in there, it's not a big deal if you go in and excessively remove that a, a tiny bit because you know, you're going to be uh, filling that all with cement. It's not going to be visible. So I usually do orient like this, okay? You wouldn't want to orient this way because that would solve the problem of um, uh, supports in the intaglio, but it creates the, uh, or I'm sorry, of the socket, but it creates the problem of supports in the intaglio. And if you go too much here, you're going to affect your fit. Um, or if you don't do enough, you're going to have a little sore spot for the denture. So if time is not an issue, let's say if you're going to uh, print this overnight, then my orientation would be like this, okay? And then I would build supports under this, generate supports, and we would print this. And that way there's going to be almost no supports internally. In fact, if I wanted to remove those individually, I could edit support mode, remove that, or leave them. They're going to be easy to deal with either way. But on the exterior, you're going to see that I have very minimal supports in the sockets themselves. So this would require the least cleanup and finishing, but time-wise, because it's oriented this way, uh, this is going to be a 3 hour and 16 minute print. If I go to next dent, uh, next dent, denture base, there it is. Um, so 15 milliliters of material at 100 microns, and this is a 2 hour and 7 minute print time. That stuff prints pretty fast, so not terrible. But let's instead uh, remove the supports and let's orient it like I was going to do earlier. So if I do it this way on denture base, now it's going to use a little bit less material and our print time goes down drastically. I stu do still need to add some supports here. So much quicker print time, 56 minutes now. And if you have multiple printers, you can have these going at the same time. So basically within one hour, these parts are, are ready to go. Rinse them off in alcohol, give them a, an initial cure, bond them together, and then I like to do my final post cure with everything already bonded together. Um, the only other thing I can tell you that you might want to do if you're printing, and if this is one that's going to stay in the mouth long term, is that you, I'm sure you're aware that you'll have little terrace lines of, of your printed layers, is take a finger, dip it in your pink resin, and very, very lightly just paint a skim coat on the denture base. That will fill in all those little nooks and crannies between the terrace lines, cure that, and now you've got a very smooth, and it, it polishes your denture base. So now it's going to be shiny, smooth, polished, ready to go, without affecting the fit hardly at all. Um, you could do the same thing with your teeth. Um, I like on the exterior surface to use a product from um, uh, Annex Dent called Nano Varnish. And this Nano Varnish is intended actually for this purpose. They're, they're typically using it on hybrids that have composite, like gingival composite. But it's great. It smooths out any of the lines. It puts a beautiful gloss coat on it, and it's protective. So that if you've done any staining, let's say you stained it down from bleach shade to an A2, it'll help protect that staining some. So long video. Um, the, the conventional process does not take this long. I've been running my mouth for a really long time. But I wanted you to see the entirety of the process so that you can hopefully start doing this from A to Z. Um, I think this is such a tremendous benefit to people to be able to make dentures in-house, be it um, long-term or temporary dentures, at such a low cost. You know, right now the export is free. Material-wise, you're probably looking at less than $10 total for printed teeth, printed bases. Um, if you're going to do conventional teeth, the, the nobilium ones that we sell, uh, per arch, you're still looking at about $10 in teeth and then maybe 5 bucks for the base. Not a lot of cost involved with this, which is a huge benefit because none of us are getting paid uh, probably what we deserve to be paid on dentures. So I hope you find this useful. I will attach uh, these practice files in the comments so that you can hopefully get going and start practicing with the software. So happy denture making to you.